guys, it's Paul from International Scale Modeler. Um, just a follow up from our paint videos, um, I thought I'd do a quick one on airbrushing. So, I'm just going to quickly run through all the equipment I use, uh, all through from the uh, spray booth, the compressor, tools, and what have you, through to my airbrushes, the reasons I use them, what they're used for, uh, the airbrushes themselves, why I like them, uh, pros, cons, etc. Um, so, Let's get on with the video. I'm going to take the camera off its tripod and move over to a spray booth so I can give us a bit of a, a view backwards uh, from where I normally film from. Okay, so I've taken the camera off its tripod um, just to give you a little bit of overview of my spray booth, um, the way I do things and the equipment I use. So, obviously, we've got the spray booth itself, Graphic Air uh, A300S. Uh, fantastic bit of kit, not cheap. Um, they work out about 280 uh, retail, uh, I got a bit cheaper as part of a, a group deal, group buy. Uh, fantastic bit of kit, ruse all the smells through that hose, two outside, you don't smell a thing in here. Fantastic, saves your lungs, your health, everything. An absolute must buy of some description uh, is a booth of some sort, just for your own health and safety and what have you. Uh, we've got a couple of daylight tube lights on top. Um, Hope to upgrade that at some point to the single one I've got over my work desk, but for now they do the job. Um, inside, obviously you've got the base, the little bit of uh, the top and sides, and a bit of kitchen towel on the bottom just to catch any spills and what have you. Uh, underneath, uh, my compressor, which is a Pash. Uh, it's quite an old one, a few years old now, probably five six years old. I bought it second hand. Fantastic knob at the front and the dial. You can put whatever pressure you want on there, all the way down and all the way up to you know 30 plus psi. Airbrush hose runs up to my airbrush stand before airbrushes. We'll run through those in a minute. Uh, they all got quick releases on, so literally snap off that hose, pop it on, away you go. Uh, airbrush cleaner. So you pop your airbrush in there. You can empty all the contents of the colour cup to say you spray it into the atmosphere or through your filter on your airbrush booth. Various thinners, which we went through in the uh, paints videos. Um, so all four there, they're all thinners. Uh, behind those we've got cleaners, and to the right cleaning fluids as well. Uh, a little empty tub, bit of cotton, uh, sorry, tissue paper in for emptying the colour cup contents out of. Say wasting it all through the uh, cleaner. Cotton buds, cocktail sticks, various tools, pipettes, brushes, etc., stirrers, and what have you. Uh, we've got various airbrush tools at the back in the carousel, as you can see. A pair of pliers for getting stuff and paint lids open. I'll go through the tools in a minute when we go through the airbrush. Uh, a couple of Tamiya stand, one for models, one for bits and bobs. So if you've got a lot of bo bits and bobs to dry, you've got plenty of holes, clips and what have you to hang them on there. So that gives you plenty of you know room to put parts to dry. So basically that, that's my spray booth area. I'll give you a little bit of a, an overview. So... This was originally over on the far right hand corner, um, but it looked a bit untidy, I was never completely happy with it. So it now lives over here, obviously storage either side, plugs everywhere, paper on the floor, nice to see. Um, so that's it, absolutely superb bit of kit. Obviously now we're back to my airbrushes. I've got four, I've just collected them over time, no specific reason. Um, as to what particular ones they are, just ones I've managed to buy at some point. They've all got their uses. Um, in my team, Overkill, I've four. I've got my reasons, which I'll go through and explain now. So, I've got two eye waters and two harder steam backs. Um, two harder steam backs. This one, my evolution. Um, I've had this now for hmm, two plus years, easy. Um, it's got the setting back on it, so restricts your trigger pull um, it's got the easy wipe nozzle on it to wipe off your needle quite easily all the seals because uh, it's an older one they're not the cellulose uh, resistant ones I've replaced them all so they are um, larger colour cup this was the evolution set um, came with the 0.2 and the 0.4 needle I never used the 0.4 I haven't used it once to be honest but the options always there but I need to spray something a little bit larger or what have you comes with a 2mm I think it is and a 4mm or 5mm colour cup which is the one I use all the time um, very very nice airbrush absolutely superb very easy to work on uh, strips right down every single component comes apart so it makes it a lot easier to clean and what have you 
Um, absolutely superb airbrush. Uh, it's had that much use. If I can get the newer one, you see the colour, uh, the difference in the colour cup. I've taken all the nickel off this one because it's been that well used. Um, absolutely superb. So a couple of different uh, new no no nozzles, sorry, in its lifetime, and a couple of new needles as well. But everything else is as it came out the box. Absolutely superb. My first go-to airbrush. Um, for intricate work, I mean, you can literally write pencil thin lines with it, I can write my name with it, um, up to completely covering a model as well. So, absolutely superb, love it. My favourite, so that one um, I just use for Tamiya Paints and Mr. Hobby. Nothing else goes in there. Um, I'll explain why in a minute. So, just those two paints is what that's used for. So, that's that one. Next up, another uh, Harder Steam Mac Evolution. Exactly the same as that one. Um, difference is these come with a setting back a standard because it's a slightly newer one. Um, I had to pay £20 option on that one to get that. Again, it's got the pinch tip on it, the larger colour cup. Um, this wasn't an Evolution uh, double set, this was just the single airbrush. So I had to buy the larger colour cup for it. And obviously, as I said, they've all got quick releases on. So as I was the single hose to snap on and off each one. Exactly the same as this one, but just not as old, not as well used. Um, this one just gets used for Vallejo Air and extra acrylics. The reason for that is I often use cellulose paint, and I'm sure the Mr. Hobby Thinner is cellulose based in some way or other. Cellulose paint reacts with Vallejo Air and extra acrylics. Absolute nightmare to clean. I got sick of taking the airbrush to bits to get gunk out the, uh, the needle set. So this come across at a good price, I bought it and haven't looked back. So I know it seems overkill having four airbrushes, but I do have my reasons and obviously it's my hobby. I'll do what I want at the end of the day. Um, so there we go, two of those exactly the same, exactly the same as that one, strips down, uh, available to clean all the parts, 0.2 needle again, absolutely phenomenal airbrush, love it a bit. Uh, next one, I want a revolution, it's probably I want as competitive with this one. Uh, nice difference in this one, you get a cap on the colour cup, uh, the only downside is the colour cup doesn't come off, so you can't replace or take it off to clean. Um, lovely airbrush, again, quick release on it again, no setting um, back section to it, but at the end of the day I very rarely use it to be honest anyway. Um, this one gets used primarily, well sorry, primarily, totally just for alclads, be it the metal finish or the clear coats. Um, that, that's, that's all that goes through this as well as the primers um, so that's it literally alkaline only because the cellulose is based I don't want to be spraying metal finishes with this then put, start putting Tamiya paint in and get a metallic black by accident because there's still remnants of alkaline in so again that's the reason why I've got an airbrush just for those so alkaline metal finishes, primers and the clear coats come out of that this one's just primarily cleaned with cellulose, so it's always spotless, and I guarantee it is if I look inside, which it is, and as you can see, I'll leave a little bit of cellulose thinner in there, just to keep the nozzle nice and clear. Awesome airbrush, not quite as good as the, uh, the Evolution, the uh, Harder Steam Back, purely and simply for a reason. You can take the Harder Steam Back to bits, I'll do it quickly, and you can clean that, nope, we're empty. You unscrew the front section on this. Off it pops, nice and careful. There's the needle. There's the needle nozzle. So out that comes, so you can get in there with your cleaning brush or your needle uh, ream or what have you. So nice and easy to clean. You pop that in, pop that back on, pop it over your needle. So I'm going to be careful because it's a brand new needle. Screw it on, job done. With the eye water. Front section unscrews off, like so. You need a little spanner to get to that part, but you can't get back from this part. So not quite as easy to clean. Um, I don't think it's far on a needle either. It does, certainly doesn't look it, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it's I Water Revolution CR. Um, still very good. Um, you won't go wrong with either of those, but for me the hardest steam back gets it. So that's that one, and then the little Neo for eye water, um, fifty pound airbrush, 
absolutely brilliant for the money. Uh, I've upgraded it so they've got the, the crown cap on it, which makes it a bit easier to keep an eye on the uh, needle, get it cleaned and what have you. Um, again, it's got a colour cup cap on it. Again, spotless inside, little remnants of cleaning fluid in there, which will probably be Vallejo. Let's have a little smell. No, it's cellulose. So, this just gets used for clear coat. Um, everything from um, Vallejo uh, Model Air to um, any of the other clear coats, clear, and we'll have you put through it. So, try and avoid the Alclad based ones because, again, I'm mixing all the different clear coats. But I use this for clear, uh, Johnson's Floor Polish, and the Vallejo finishes as well. So, 50 quid airbrush, absolute bargain. Ideal first airbrush, but not as quite as versatile as these. But these are 120 a piece, that's 100, this is 50. So it's a very, very cheap, cracking little airbrush. Again, quick release on it, absolutely brilliant. Um, so they're my airbrushes, they're all the uses. So as I say, they have got reasons for having them. Uh, I'm not just mental on collecting airbrushes, although a lot of people seem to think so. Uh, a few of the bits and bobs for them. Uh, I want a super lube. Sounds a bit dodgy. Uh, it's non-silicon based. It's a lube for the actual needle and needle uh, bearings inside. So if you take your needle out, give it the airbrush a full clean, which you should do every now and then anyway. Tiniest, tiniest little bit of this on the needle makes it absolutely super smooth. Brilliant. So as I said about the eye waters, you have to use a spanner on the needle nozzle. That's a spanner, so that's what takes it off. If you want to do that, you can get it all out to clean. Not quite as versatile as the um, Harvest Steam Vec, but easy enough to clean still, not much of a problem. Um, we've got a set of uh, needle nozzle cleaners, so various sizes there to get up and in the airbrush to get any stuff and paint out and what have you. And then the two Harvest Steam Vec tools, a little needle nozzle brush, absolutely invaluable. All different sizes, gets in every single little part of that airbrush from the nozzle. Uh, the centre sections through to the um, the air channels, every single part you can get through with this, absolutely superb. And the most important tool of all, the uh, Harvest Steam Beck um, nozzle reamer. So, as I showed you, you can take it out of this one, you can get right in there with this, get every last single speck of paint out of there, and your airbrush is always spotless. But I find, if, keep them clean uh, after every use. Um, like I say, I use windscreen uh, washer fluid to clean them through. The reason I use that is cheap. I can push much through without not worrying about cost. So once I finish spraying, if it's Tamiya or uh, Vallejo, I'll fill the colour cup up with that. Uh, give it a real good rinse through. Um, a lot of the time I like to backflow it. So I get a bit of tissue, hold it over the end, give it some air, pull back a bit. That directs the airflow back into the airbrush and bubbles up in the cup so that pushes back any specks of paint, flecks of paint, dry paint and what have you. That first lot I'll just ditch into that little plastic tub I showed you before. Give the airbrush a wipe. Uh, whatever's left behind I'll then use the appropriate cleaner, be it for Vallejo, Tamiya, cellulose, whatever, to get the majority out. Give it a good old spray through, make sure there's no remnants in there. And Most important of all, somebody once told me, don't let the airbrush sit dry, leave a little bit of uh, cleaner in there. So next time you come to it, everything's moist, nothing's dried or set. A little bit of a spray, get rid of everything, and away you go. Doing that, I have to strip these down probably once oh, every two weeks for a complete clean. Um, and normally that's only when I've left the airbrush to one side, but I've been filming or um, you know made a mistake, dropped a bit of paint or something, what have you. Uh, so it really is very minimal upkeep the way I clean them that way. So. That's my basic airbrush setup. Uh, if you've got any questions, give me a shout and I'll try and answer them. Um, hopefully next time, um, in one of the next videos following, I'm hoping to do like a small um, paint test review. So I'll start with the primers, show all the different primers, how they go down, um, the effects that happens um, with them without primer as well. Then I'll start going through all the different paints I use, again to the clear coats and what have you cleaners um, and we'll set to see if we can set up a load of videos like that to cover the whole broader aspect of the airbrush inside. Um, most of my painting, just while I'm on about it, is done at about 20-25 psi. That'll be with Vallejo, um, Tamiya, Mr Hobby and what have you. Um, extra acrylics, I tend to spray a little bit lower, about 20 psi. 
um, just because they're a lot, lot thinner. Um, and the Alcards, the primers are about 15 psi, the clear coats are about 15 to 20, and the actual metal finishes they recommend between 12 uh, 10 and 15 i spread about 10 sorry 10 and 15 i spread about 10 so it's quite a bit of stuff to remember but if you don't airbrush it makes a massive difference uh, it makes painting a lot easier a lot quicker a lot less fuss uh, you start getting yourself into a more organized side of modeling because you start looking at the instructions picking parts to do in batches because there's nothing my it's nothing instruction going all those three parts are black I'll spread all those together now and you go back and then the next section says oh this bit's black as well and you think oh god so it makes you look ahead through the instructions and you start batching what you've got to paint so you end up just spraying 10 parts in black 3 in white as you go through so you can do step by step and it, make, it makes your model a lot more uh, systematic and easier on yourself as well and obviously doing it that way you also brush paint less because you can there's clever ways of doing it I will cover it at some point you can brush paint uh, airbrush every single little part if you're clever enough just leaving the one or two parts you need to brush paint so again you get a better finish that way um, making your models look more uh, professional um, as you go so that's it for this um, short video uh, I hope you like what you've seen actually any questions give me a shout it's Paul at uh, International Scale Modeler um, check out our website um, sorry forum always say website um, I'll put the link in the YouTube description. It's www.inscalemodeler.com, um, and I'll see you next time for our next video. So take care. Thanks for watching.